So EAC is as a movement is often formulated in contrast to EA, effective altruism. Mm -hmm. What do you think are the pros and cons of effective altruism? What's interesting, insightful to you about them and what uh, is negative? Right. I think I think like people trying to do good from first principles is 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 good. We should actually say, and sorry to interrupt, we should probably say that, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but effective altruism is is a kind of movement that's trying to do good optimally, where good is probably measured something like the amount of suffering in the world. You want to minimize it. And uh, there's ways that that can go wrong, as any optimization can. And so it's interesting to explore uh, like how things can go wrong. We're we're both trying to do good to some extent and we're we're both trying we're we're arguing for which loss function we yeah. should use, right? Yes. Their loss function is sort of hedons, right? Uh units of hedonism, like how how like how good do you feel and for how much time? Right? And so suffering would be negative hedons. Um and they're trying to minimize that. But to us that seems like uh, that loss function has sort of spurious minima, right? You can, um, you know, start minimizing shrimp farm pain, right? Which seems not that productive to me. Um, uh, or you can end up with wireheading where you just, you know, either install a neural link or you scroll TikTok forever and you feel good on the short term time scale because you're in neurochemistry. But on long-term time scale, it causes decay and, and, and death, right? Because uh, you're not being productive. Whereas sort of EAC measuring progress of civilization, uh, not in terms of a subjective loss function like hedonism, um, um, but rather an objective measure, a quantity that cannot be gamed that is physical energy, right? It's very objective, right? And, 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 and there's not many ways to game it. Right, if you if you did it in terms of like GDP or a currency, that's pinned to a certain value that's moving, right? And so that's not a good way to measure our progress. And so, uh, but the thing is, we're both trying to make progress and ensure humanity flourishes and, and gets to grow. We just have different uh, loss functions and different ways of going about uh, doing it. Is there a degree? Maybe you can educate me. Correct me. I get a little bit skeptical when there's an equation involved, trying to reduce all of the human civilization, human experience to an equation. Is there a degree that we should be skeptical of the tyranny of an equation, a lo of a loss function over which to optimize? Like having a kind of intellectual humility about optimizing over loss functions? Yeah, so, so, so this particular loss function, it's not, it's not stiff, it's kind of an average of averages, right? It's like distributions of states in the future are gonna follow a certain distribution. So it's not um, deterministic. It's not like, we're not on like stiff rails, right? It's just a statistical uh, statement uh, about the future. But at the end of the day, you know, you can believe in gravity or not, you know, but it's not necessarily an option to obey it. Right, uh, and some some people try to test that, and that goes not so well. So similarly, you know, I think I think thermodynamics is there whether we like it or not, and we're just trying to point out uh, what is and and try to orient ourselves and 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 chart a path forward given given this fundamental truth. But there's still some uncertainty. There's still a lack of information. Humans tend to fill the gap of the lack of information with narratives. And so how they interpret, it, you know, even physics is up to interpretation when there's uncertainty involved. Um, and humans tend to use that mm -hmm. to further their own means. Yeah. So it's always, whenever there's an equation, it just seems like until we have really perfect understanding of the universe, it, humans will do what humans do. And they try to... Uh, use the narrative of doing good mm -hmm. to fool the populace into doing bad. Yep. 
I just, I guess that this is something that should be skeptical about in all movements. That's right. So we invite skepticism, right? <laughs> we, do, do you have an understanding of what might, uh, uh, to a degree that went wrong, what do you think may have gone wrong with effective altruism that might also go wrong with effective accelerationism? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, um, I think it provided initially a sense of community for, you know, engineers and intellectuals and rationalists in the early days. And um, it seems like the community was very healthy, but then, you know, they formed all sorts of organizations and started routing capital and having actual power, right? They have real power. They influence the government, they influence most AI orgs now. I mean, they're literally controlling the board of OpenAI, right? And look over to Anthropic. I think they have some control over that too. And so I think, you know, the assumption of EAC is more like capitalism is that every agent organism and meta organism is going to act its own, in its own interest. Mm -hmm. And we should maintain sort of adversarial equilibrium or, or adversarial competition to keep each other in check at all times, at all scales. Um, I think that, yeah, ultimately it was the perfect cover to acquire tons of power and capital. And unfortunately, sometimes that, uh, that, that corrupts people over time. 